Father, we just want to thank you for what you've done today. With hungry and expected hearts, we say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Rest on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. One of the fruits of fasting is greater um, awareness. Your senses begin to become tantalized by the Spirit of God. You begin to hear and begin to move by his leading. Um, and today I want to kind of follow through from last week, but at the same time kind of intertwine what we've been reading during the week in our fast and um, in our prayer time. I haven't got a title, hence untitled. So by the end of today, one of you guys will give me a title. Amen. So I want to quickly want to recap from last week. Last week was Dig Deep, based on Luke 6, 46. Got some four main key areas I want you guys to, um, um, to remember. First one is you're only as deep as you obey. He spoke about the deep Christians are not the ones that speak in tongues and can prophesy and can do many works, but it's those that actually obey God. Yeah, it's on. Cool. I also spoke about that your depth is revealing your capacity. Uh, and I spoke about the deeper you go, the more aware you become, that there's more to you. The last, the third one was our obedience creates a home for us to dwell in communion with God. He spoke about the parable where it talks about a man that built his house and the foundation that obedience is us building a house that God comes and dwells in communion with us. And the last but not least, we spoke about obedience keeps what God freely gives. Obedience keeps what God freely gives. We spoke about the commandment of God was to, um, was to abide in his love. And we spoke about the times that we don't feel or sense or are aware of it is because we've drifted away from it. So our obedience keeps us in tune with what it is that God is saying and how God thinks and feels about us. Amen? So today I want us to look at one of the scriptures we spoke about this week, which is Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, I want to stick on verse 17 to 18. Excuse the typer. It reads, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, A&T, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ. I want to read it again in the Amplified. Big up my Amplified crew in the house. I feel like the Amplified amplifies <laughs> these verses. It says, may Christ through your faith actually dwell in brackets, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Verse 18. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love what is the breadth, the length, and the height of it? Last week, we spoke about the man that hears God's word and obeys God's word. He digs deep and he lays a foundation. Paul lets us know what this foundation is. Love. Love. 
Paul says the foundation that's going to keep us on that day of testing is love. But before he gets there, he, he, he gives us insight as to how we are rooted deep and founded securely on love. He says, may Christ through faith make his permanent home in your hearts. So for me, digging deep has been made very simple. It's by faith. I think it's John 6, Jesus is being queried by the Pharisees. And Jesus says, look fam, the only works that you need to work is to believe that I am the one that God sent. And if we're really honest, in this fast, sometimes, and we can hear it in our language, we feel like if we're doing the fast, the fast is going to make God love me. But the fast is supposed to bring an awareness about how much God loves you. We feel like if we do certain things or if we are a certain thing, that's when I'm pleasing to God. But the Bible says that if we have faith, we please God. Not perfect behavior, but faith. Are you guys following me here? Yeah? So how does Christ make his home in you? By you believing in him. I want to echo this belief thing. Believe. The word, the fast is called according to thy word. What does the word say about Christ to you? And whatever it says to you, I want you to believe it. This is really humbling because none of us can never have a boast about how deep we are with God. Because whatever depth we have is what he gave. We just believe. You guys following me here today? God has to make it by faith because he needs to excuse the boast of the human flesh that will make us feel like we did something to get close to God. God came close to us. You guys following me here, yeah? He died on the cross. He became man. He took our sin. He said, come. He says, I will make you white as snow. He says, my thoughts towards you are love continue. Christ is the first mover. Man them. Christ is the first mover. <laughs> the initiator. And our whole Christian life is a life of response. That's why Paul says, I, 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 all I care to know amongst you is Christ and him crucified. Well, what's he echoing here? He's simplifying the Christian walk to one thing, Jesus. As Damon said, it's so easy to get worked on into the things of Christ that we lose that the goal of God is to make us be recreated in the image of Christ. So when God on that day says, I never knew you, what he's really saying is that I don't see me in you. You prophesied, that's nice, cast out devils, healed sick, but the one thing that was lost when Adam sinned was the image and likeness of God. And God can never reject anything outside of himself. How do I become that, Ayo? Belief. Let's go back to the scripture. The foundation that God wants us to build our lives upon is love. The minute we say that, I need us to remember that God describes himself in New Testament theology as one thing, love. So therefore, guys, this thing is eternal. Therefore, it's something that we ought to be building upon daily. It's going to take forever and ever and ever and ever 
and ever and ever. I want to echo this because eternity is a long time. Ever to be secured and founded on this love. So there's something that you ought to be reminding yourself about daily is the love of God. I think it's Jude 20. Building your most holy faith. Keeping yourselves in the what? Praying in the what? In the Holy Ghost. Hmm, hallelujah. Jude says, how do I build this faith that I must seed? Keep yourself in the love of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You guys are me today. So, digging deep is not past tense, it's present. Every day is a day to dig deep. Remember, digging deep is what? Obeying God. Because sometimes we can read Luke 6 and think that, okay, I've got to dig deep first, lay a foundation, then build a house. God is saying that parable is daily. This digging deep, this foundation laying, You can't rely on the deep of yesterday, today, guys. Today's a new day. You've got new mercies, hallelujah. Another chance, hallelujah. Another opportunity, hallelujah. So today, I want you to deep God's love for you. I know we hear it, and depending on how you think about love and all, this good, all that good stuff, you may just think what I'm saying is what you've heard before, but... When we deep who God is and that his chosen reflection and his chosen definition is love, I think it's going to do something to our lives daily. If the sum of the whole law is love yourself and love your neighbor, there's something about love that ought to shift your identity that would then shift your behavior. Sometimes we're fasting, we're praying about the behavior of God's trying to get you rooted in the identity. Are you guys following me here? He's trying to reinforce that identity of sonship, daughterhood. And we're fixated on getting it all right. Let's get to hell. Let's get to go to hell. But God's just like, I love you. I'm trying to form you. Can you just be still for a moment? And the issue of being still, if we're doing nothing, that's the whole point. God is at work in you. Amen? So verse 18. Believe Christ dwells in our hearts, our hearts being the deepest essence of our being, being rooted deep in love, founded securely on love. Then he goes further and describes what he wants our minds to do. And he says that we need to have the power. That means that we need the Holy Spirit. He says that you may have power to apprehend and grasp. So these are two functions of the mind. And two weeks ago, I spoke about write it down, meditate, about how God says through the renewal of your mind, you will be what? Transformed. So if it's spiritual, it's practical, right? If this scripture is real, it's going to be real in your life, right? And so he says, don't just do it. Do it with all the saints. Hmm. Come to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. God, though he's personal and relational, he's all about us being one. And there's something about how we're doing this prayer and fasting in community that's going to allow us to really deep how wide, where is it? How the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth that God's love is for us. So what am I saying? If we want to really discern that you're believing in Jesus and you've been rooted and founded in love, we're going to find evidence of you being in community practicing this love. 
How can you say you love God who you can't see and you hate your brother who you can see? You are a what? I can't hear you. I don't want to say, I don't want to say liar. <laughs> you are a liar. Deep words, guys. Deep words, guys. God now measures how we receive his love based on how we love one another. I'm echoing this because I want to bring context as to why we're doing this in community. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as their children. Verse 2. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Verse 4. Neither filthiness, foolish talking, hmm, coarse jesting, my goodness, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. I really love this scripture. I love it because, like I always say, I read it slowly. Before it gets juicy, verse 3 and 4, God understands that how he addresses us is by first our identity. You see, God didn't say, do imitators. God said, be imitators of God. This is a very, very important word. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. So what's God do when he speaks to us through her? He's calling you out. God is calling out who you really are. Children of God. And if you're children of God, Therefore, imitate your father. He addresses the root before the fruit. So this is how we identify when we're being really corrected by godly people. Did they just come and tell you, oh, you're this, you're that? Or did they address who you are first? Did they remind you that, hey, look, fam, walk in love. Why? Because Christ walked in love. And then we get to the fornication, you know, all that good stuff. This is very, very crucial because God's attitude is being displayed here. He sees you as his daughter. Look, these guys were fornicating. These guys were coveting. These guys were doing madnesses. Yet he started the conversation with their children. God is calling you out. Let there be Emmanuel, the real Emmanuel. I don't care what's happening in your life right now. Emmanuel that I've called, I'm calling you out. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. There's a whole new world inside of you, beloved, that God is calling out to be. You, don't, you guys don't have no clue who you really are, you know. Even me and I have no clue. The reality of who you are is on the other side of obedience, beloved. And God specializes on taking us on journeys that may not look right, but in the end become very sweet. And the goal ain't to have all the answers. The goal is to be led. <laughs> The goal <laughs> is not to have all the answers. The goal is to be.
be led. Your obedience is unraveling you guys. This digging deep, this obeying God, this building a house on the rock, is God exposing you to who you really are by your obedience to his word, which is conforming you into his image. The word was there in the beginning. The word was God. The word became flesh. God ain't in the business of talking. He's in the business of manifesting. And it's time for us as a family to realize that if God said it, that has to be it. You guys follow me here, yeah? Faith has to be tangible. Because when God said let it be light, light actually happened, you know? As far as I know, my God can't lie. So I want you guys to deep today, because time is fast spent. Your identity, next slide, man of God, produces your behavior. Anything that you're living out that ain't right is because something here ain't right. If you're examining yourself and you're trying to change yourself, the change that's required is not stop this, stop that. It's believe Christ. Are you guys following me here? Right belief produces right being. Right being produces right behavior. And right behavior is a byproduct of a mind being made right. Before you guys try to do the workings of renewing your mind and doing this and doing that, do verse 1 from Romans 12. Present yourself. You see, normally they present dead things on the altar. But God wants us to be a living sacrifice. So I've come to the conclusion that the process I'm on until the day that I die, until he comes, is... Ayo, will you stay still on that altar? It's Ayo, will you remain on that altar? It's Ayo, will you just yield? David said, I bind my arms and legs to the horns of the altar. More times, the lack of change of behavior is just a lack of me settling myself as an identity, as one who is a living sacrifice unto God. And this part is hard because, you know, fire is not nice. Hallelujah. But the fiery trials are supposed to test your faith. And the testing of your faith is supposed to produce a glory. And that glory is supposed to be your new garment. So more times in the Christian walk, disappointment, condemnation is us focusing on behavior and not identity. If God said it, guys, he's going to do it. I don't care how long it's going to take. The Bible says, imitate your ancestors of the faith, who through faith and patience inherited the promises of God. Let patience have its full work in you, that you may be lacking and made perfect. What's the first word of love? Love is patient, kind, endures all things, hopes all things, believes all things. Love never fails. That's you. You are not a failure. As long as you stay rooted and the that you're loved, you can never fail. So for me, just to be transparent, practically this week, 
can't remember what day or the fast it was. I must have prayed, you know, this, these prayers that I'm saying to you now on Sunday. <laughs> and I prayed a prayer. I said, oh, um, I said, Holy Spirit, um, love on me now. And when I said that, I felt really weird. I said, like, well, what kind of prayer point is that? <laughs> it was 5 a.m. in the morning after changing this little king's nappy and that. So the Holy Spirit, love on me now. And, and, and I, I remember I was, I, wasn't, I was ill on Monday, so I was really weak in my body. And I said, Lord, this fast is really bringing up some things that I need to process. I need to go to counseling, all this good stuff. I'm like, Lord, life is life right now. And I need to feel what it is I know is true. You know, because sometimes we pray, and the reason why we don't pray is because we don't really believe God's listening. Or we believe that, I ain't prayed in a minute, so I need to check my balance. (laughs) That's being honest. Or the mindset behind God is that he's Lord, he's holy, he's all the way over there. I've got to do all this stuff before I get to the throne. And what I love about Ephesians 5 verse 1 is that he calls me children. If so if I'm his child, he's my what? The revelation of God as Father has to shift our prayer lives, guys. Now, deep it, the other side is that a lot of us have daddy issues. So even me saying that is a trigger. So therefore we need what? Healing. And the beautiful thing about that is that all of that was given to us when Christ gave himself for us. This is what I'm saying, guys, daily, like no cliche. We need to deep the love of God. Whatever I see my father do, I do. Whatever my father says, I say. Jesus' life was just one thing. See God, do what he does. Hear God, repeat what he says. And today, I just want us to re-engage with the mindset that if we're going to have a definition for God, my heavenly father uh, honestly guys be, being a, a real father shifts this because you know he said you for what 10 11 weeks he doesn't annoy me but let's be honest i'm human sometimes i'm tired this is no every day like that guy does not fail to make me smile and i told you this guy has not done anything. Don't pay bills. Don't wash my plates. Don't do nothing. But the mere existence of him in my arms is life fulfilled. If me being evil know how to give good gifts to my children, how much more our father in heaven? Guys, he's done nothing, you know. I need to deep He's done zero. But the love of my heart for him to me, it's even like, this, is, this love, is, it can't be real. Song of Solomon says that when we look to heaven, the heart of God races. The Bible says that when we look to heaven, God is longing to hear our voice. I want us to reframe prayer. When Adam sinned, the first time man sinned, God came looking for him. Adam, where are you? One more time again, God is addressing identity before sin. He called his name. And he's like, bro, where are you at? He's like, oh, I'm behind her. He's like, I'm naked. I'm not behind. He's like, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree? Check the process, guys. He checks identity first and deals with sin last. Why? He's processing us. He says, I'm going to call you out. Then I'm going to address what voices have you been listening to? 
What conversation have you been entertaining? Then he addresses the action. That's how God puts us, because correction without understanding leads to condemnation. And God is not in the business of condemning us. So he will walk out the process through calling you out. Today, God is calling us out, guys. And I want us to respond. Let's rise to our feet. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. You cannot out sin the love of God. Your sin cannot reduce how God feels and thinks about you. And today, I just want to simply rededicate our perspective of God today. And I want us to ask the Father to, to give us the revelation of his fatherhood towards us. Honestly, guys, if our walk with God is not born out of love, it won't last. Frustration will kick in. The wise will multiply. But if we can live in the daily reality that my Father in heaven loves me, is with me, is in me, is for me, if he did not spare even his own son whom he loved, how much more freely would he give unto me all things? Who can bring charge against God's elect? Who is that that condemns? It is only God who justifies. Therefore, we are more than conquerors in Christ, through Jesus Christ, whom loved us. And Father, I just speak over this house today that you will begin to heal wounds, Father, in the area of daddy issues, O oh God. Lord, I pray where our parents may have miscued our understanding of fatherhood and motherhood and somehow that's allowed to infiltrate how we see and understand you. Today, I'm asking for a new slate, God. Uh, I'm asking for the blood of the Lamb to wash that memory. Uh, I'm asking for the blood of the Lamb, Father, to wash, oh God, that perspective and perception. Uh, and I'm asking for the God who makes all things new. The God who makes all things new. The God who makes all things new to demonstrate his power in our lives today. So, Father, we pray as your son prayed, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come into the hearts of every individual. Give them today a daily bread. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we pray in this last week of fasting. Let there be rivers of healing, oh God, that flows to each and every individual. I want you to use this last week of fast to really allow whatever God brings to the surface. Don't ignore it away. Lean into it. Lean into it. This fast is going to bring back some old memories and some old cases that you may have thought was dead and gone. But God wants to heal. God wants to restore God is not in the business of, 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 of just trimming old branches. He will give you a whole new tree, guys. Hallelujah. God's just not in the business of just trying to address something that was, God says, I will do a new thing, guys. I can give you a new heart, daughter. I can give you a new mind, son. I can change how you see things, son. I can change how you view your life, how you view women, son. Hmm. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it, says God. Just come. 
Just come. 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 And Lord, may we come running after you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all may have.